Hello, Dave here. I've come to see this wonderful church in my own town. It's Trinity Church. It was burnt down in 1991. I think that was the date. And with it being a great Zulister building, they've preserved it. But what I'm really here for today, I'll have a quick look around the outside with you. But uh, one of my son's friends kindly uh, the charity he works for uh, tidies up in here you know keeps the grounds nice and once he found out my interest in the church he's uh, kindly said that he'd come down and let me have a look around inside because it's quite spectacular the thing that I keep asking with all churches as you'll see with this one is why are all unnecessary. And it's not all necessary to the extent where you know there's actually a new one being put up there. You can see the one was damaged. And also what gets me about this church is the amount of creepy dudes we have on each corner you know churches are family orientated places not a very nice thing to be putting up there to terrorise the kids is it but there you go quick look around the outside uh, I have problems with not problems but these things here these buttresses that stick out we told the support walls, uh, but I don't believe that. I believe that it's part of the functionality of what this building was built for originally. Uh, and part of that is energy gathering technology. You know, the idea, you know, Tesla was a one off and, you know, it was all scrapped after that. You know, I believe in the 1700s. Uh, Atmospheric electricity, atmospheric power, whatever you want to call it, was very much prevalent. I'll just stop for a sec. You will say I go a bit too fast. Well, in focus he is. But there's another one of these horrible goon things that they have on each corner. The other thing as well catches me interest with these places. That's the air bricks. Now the air bricks on buildings are quite often telltale signs of underground levels. But these ones in churches I think are a totally different reason. Uh, I'm not sure where the company walls basically. Uh, all these churches have two walls, they have two layers. Which begs the question, why is that necessary? You know, this massive expense that the churches have gone to. You know, if you're building an exterior wall, then an interior wall, you're talking about double the amount of bricks. So, the expense of these buildings really is just phenomenal. Just stop here because I'll come back a bit. You know we have these horrible creatures. What's all that about with religion? Family orientated, children. And you have them bloody things. Where have they gone? Where's he gone? You'd have them horrible bloody things and just move around a bit further and there's another one yeah this religion love and peace and all the rest of it goes out the window when you start to see these sort of uh, things the other thing I want to point out with this place and low levels 
back in the 90s, just before this burnt down, I was actually in this place. And that's how we used to get in. Now that is the very top of the doorway. There used to be a set of steps leading down, and that's how we used to get in, below ground level. So, be interesting to see when I get inside if there's any mandal covers or anything, because it's difficult to see the thickness of all these walls. They're so thick because of the cavity. No, it's not just on churches I've found this. I will one day put a video together on this but as you will find with all churches they're actually double laid now I've had somebody suggest to me that they're double laid because of damp well damp you know you're talking about double the expense of brickwork just to conquer damp the other thing that really gets me around this side let me move a bit closer. I don't want to shine up the top of the sun's in my eyes. But it's a derelict church, it's not used no more. Just all through the fence there. Focusing very well, there we are. All these pipes, it's not one, but it's right along the church. Let's have a look at the nice scenery. Till I get level with these, and I'll show you some more. But right down the side of the church. If anyone's got any ideas, please let me know. But what are these here for? What is the purpose? Go round a bit. There they go. There's another two. And they're all down the side of the building. So really, we've come a full circle on the building. But the point I want to make as well, while I'm stood here, 100 yards. We have a church with a spire. 100 yards down that way, you have another church. Opposite that church is a mosque. All built around the same time. The mosque wasn't, but the church prior to that was. And if you go another hundred yards further along to a road called Yam Road, within the space of 150 yards, there's another four churches, all built in Victorian times. But when you look overall at the records of Stockton, it doesn't reflect this massive boom that supposedly was on churches. Other sun's out the way. These walls here support columns. Uh, I don't believe that's the purpose of them. You know, if, if your wall's double thickness, there's no need for support columns like that because I don't believe that is the purpose. This church also has around the bottom what I call a skirting board. It's a more modern addition to hide basically the tops of whatever's down there. But anyway, I'll leave it for that. How about for now? It's still a wonderful place, wonderful park. Graveyard it is, you know, everywhere you walk in here, you're walking on bodies. But, uh, very nice place and 
all things go well, I'll be going on the inside of that place shortly. Them orange pipes, I'd love to know the story about them. Because I still do believe that there's an underground uh, to this church. You know, it all seems to have been filled in, but I'm going to have a little check for mantle covers while I'm in there. But anyhow, that's Holy Trinity Church from the outside. Catch you later. Bye. Start with the stuff. Right, I finally managed to get inside, but one of the first things I actually wanted to do is have a look at the... There's writing on the door there. Have a look at these faces up here. You know, when you think of churches of love and, uh, <laughs> you know, children, a bit of a scary dude to be having put above your church door. I would have thought. You know? And we also have these sections here which almost look bricked in uh, but maybe not at these recesses where maybe ornaments or statues used to stand and the door itself the lights right on it it is beautiful and there is writing right across the doorway here. Maybe I have to have a look and when I get back home, can't really see very well here. And you know, it's, at least with this church, it looks a little bit more proportionate the doorways. But you know, it's it's just strange when you have things like that looking down at the congregation so I'm just gonna have a wander around here yeah. this see straight away with you know this doorway and arch Again, you, you've got these figures which aren't really what I would call family friendly. You know, they uh, a little bit morbid, some of them. But this is the thing for me, just wondering. Oh, it's wonderful, I like your Victorian boot scraper. Get the mud off for anybody who follows me channel. But this is just a. Uh, vast open space now but straight away I notice you have a, your interior that is mainly regular brickwork but this is the place can't go up no more but this is the bell tower now it did have an incident I used to be able to get into this building just before it was burnt down uh, and I have actually been up there and rang the bell uh, one afternoon when I was drunk and I come out the club. But it's difficult to see up there, it really is. But it's the thickness of the walls that get me. And that's what I'm going to do when I go outside. And that's, you know, show you the cavities in the walls like we have here as you can see you have your air bricks the other side you would have had an air brick in here and you'd have your cavity wall <coughs> I was looking for bits of metal work but you know there's not a great deal left here and there's just this pole there's quite a bit of masonry kicking about But there's nothing, you know, really obvious that sticks out 
pull them down. I mean, these all look like new blocks. It's maybe more to go up. I don't know. It's a shame. Really is. On the day that I came in to ring the bell, it was actually it was mum and dad's anniversary. You know, married in this church. But the beautiful thing about it is, and that's the symmetry. You know, it's absolutely identical both sides. Maybe not so much when you get down the bottom here. <coughs> One of the things I'm actually looking for is manhole covers. Uh, you know, inspection covers to get below. Because as I've mentioned, I've been in this place before. And I'll show you in a bit the way we used to get in. See, there's very little left. There's no woodwork left, obviously, with the fire. And the metal work is... No idea what there is. But it's these things... that get me. These things that get me with all these churches. It's part of the original, you know, supporting for the stained glass windows, which are a later addition. <coughs> Looks like there's been a lot more sturdier column there. One of the doors where you used to get in, it's where the lads store the furniture. Furniture, garden tools. Don't know what part of the church this actually is. Little room built on. There it is, it's really lovely inside. It's, trying. it's really lovely inside. You got them beasties watching over the outside. So let's have a quick walk through here. I know the chap's quite busy. You know, I'm very, very grateful for him letting me in. Now where we used to get into the church it was actually down there. It was actually below level. We actually had to came up steps to get onto this level here. So whether it's all been backfilled in now, but I know there was a low level of this. Uh, you'd have the altar, where the altar would be. Uh, you know, these alcoves, I've got no idea. I just wonder whether <laughs> that was some sort of inspection cover or plate to put over the, you know, they need to go below this place because I still do believe that uh, you know below this place there is still tunnels. I'll be able to show you from here. I've asked so many times why does religion need to go to the extent of these? Makes no sense. What they're there for? Decoration. I don't believe it. Sadly, like I said, there's very little metal work about. But it is a beautiful building. You know, it's been very well preserved. Uh, and I'm not knocking the building at all, in any way. It's the official narrative I'm knocking. I need to do a bit more research on this particular church. But uh, I really do think that there's links between this church. See, oh shit. Another little room here, look. Just have a quick look in here before we disappear. See, <coughs> here we are. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is the thing I've been, you know, <laughs> waiting to see these support walls. 
So I can understand it on a building this size. But I can't understand it on the smaller churches. I really can't. You know, it's... Uh, as you can see, the, there's no... That's not hollow or anything. It's, it's a solid wall. So, you know, you live and learn. But what I want to point out is the actual thickness of the wall. And it's that thickness because it's hollow. You know, there is actually a cavity in these walls. Now, I really don't think that damp proofing was on the mind when they built these buildings. And the other thing I have a problem with, if you'd have double wall for strength, why do you need these columns also? I mean, it's only a church, for goodness sake, to be used on a Sunday. There's bits of masonry all over the place. Uh, hoping for some rooftop finials, but uh, there's none of them. So, we'll just have a little wander back outside. <coughs> Get in the shed a little bit. And we can have a look at that up there. Because it's, it doesn't look much in its state, its present state. But when it had its spire on, uh, which was long before my time, I think, but I have pictures of it. Uh, it was truly a, a spectacular building. So, right, I think we'll just have a one crowd side in a way. So I'm in the shade. And again, it's the perfect symmetry of these places. Also that shape up there, it's a hexagon. Uh, and there's so many buildings, not only religious, but the towers are always a hexagon shape. Why I don't know. So I just wanna have a quick look outside now because what I'm going to do is measure the cavity wall so I've got some idea to compare with other churches but I'll just finish off with this place you know this was the beautiful bell tower like I say I did have the pleasure of going up there and as you can see it's a hexagon. Yeah. You know, maybe you can see things I can't. But the thickness of these walls, you can't get away with. Even Whitby Abbey is exactly the same. I won't go climbing up these stairs, because uh, they don't go very far. So that's it for this one. What I'm going to do, just want to, <coughs> my son can help me. <coughs> Excuse me a bit while I get something out my bag here. Because what I want to actually do and start and compare it with other churches. And that's these. I call events. <coughs> See, you know that is, well, you know that that is 14 inches. That piece of stick that I brought here. So the cavity wall is more than 14 inches. And I can't see the reason for it. <coughs> but I have got a lot more on the cavity walls. 
uh, that I put together in the video. So that, I'll just say thanks very much for watching. Bye.